Good morning. My name is Robert Opalecki, and I'm going to be talking about the life of Alfred Hershey. Alfred Hershey was born in 1908 in Owasso, Michigan. Hershey attended elementary and high school in Owasso and Lansing. Hershey's higher education brought him to Michigan State College, which is now known as Michigan State University. In 1930, he earned his Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, and in 1934, he earned his PhD in Bacteriology and Chemistry. A little history for the time. It was the mid-1930s, so in America, it was the middle of the Great Depression, and the Dust Bowl was occurring in the Midwest. And in the rest of the world, Hitler was named Fuhrer, and there were tensions rising in Europe. Looking at Hershey's familial relationships, not much is known about his mother but his father worked at an automobile plant in Lansing, Michigan. In 1945, Hershey married Harriet Davidson, and in 1956, they had one son named Peter. Hershey had several relationships with different universities and institutions. From 1934 to 1950, Hershey was a member of the Department of Bacteriology and Immunology at Washington University in St. Louis. After moving from St. Louis, Hershey ended up in Cold Spring Harbor, New York, and worked at the Carnegie Institution Department of Genetics. He stayed here until he retired in 1970. Hershey had relationships with several other scientists. 1936 to 1939, Hershey was conducting research with Jacques Bronfenbrenner. In 1943, Hershey began working with Delbrook and Luria on bacteriophage research. And in 1951, Martha Chase became Hershey's new research assistant at Cold Spring Harbor. Hershey and Chase got their call to fame with the Warring Blender experiments that determined if the genetic material was found in DNA or proteins. Hershey and Chase used radioactively labeled sulfur and phosphorus in separate phages that then infected bacterial cells to determine whether the genetic material was found in DNA or proteins. While completing this experiment, Hershey and Chase used several strains of bacteria with, dis with different resistances to phages, as well as different broths and mediums that the bacteria were placed in. While completing this experiment, Hershey and Chase used a warring blender, as well as a centrifuge in their lab to break up the cells and determine where the radioactively labeled element was, whether it was in the cell or out of the cell. The first part of this experiment was separating the DNA from the phage. So radioactively labeled phosphorus was placed in phages that then infected bacterial cells, which were placed in a broth and then put in the blender to get rid of all of the protein from the bacterial phages. The culture from the blender was centrifuged at 1700 G. It was then resuspended in an absorption medium to determine the location of the radioactively labeled phosphorus, whether it was in new phages or still with bacteria. The second part of this experiment followed the sulfur of the phage. So sulfur was labeled in the phages infected bacteria. The bacteria cells were then placed in a blender to break apart the viral coats on the outside. The culture from the blender was placed in ice water to cool and then it was removed at intervals, titrated, and centrifuged to determine whether the sulfur was with the new phages or not. These experiments completed by Hershey and Chase showed that in phages, sulfur-containing proteins do not enter bacterial cells and serve little to no function in phage multiplication, whereas phosphorus does. There were still three main unanswered questions after these experiments were completed. Does any sulfur-free phage material other than DNA enter the cell? If so, is it transferred to phage progeny? Is the transfer of phosphorus or hypothetical other substance to progeny direct? That is, does it remain at all times in a form specifically identifiable as phage substance, or is it indirect? In 1969, Hershey, Luria, and Delbrook shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their studies regarding the replication mechanisms and genetic structure of viruses. After Alfred Hershey retired, he continued to live on the grounds of the laboratory in Cold Spring Harbor until he passed away in 1997. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.